start cooking? You know, I was I, I was always sort of interested in cooking, but only from the standpoint of getting food. Right. Um, <laughs> I wasn't one of those, I want to be a chef right. at all. I would like to say that I was, but it would be a lie. Yeah. Um, I just loved the idea that you could cook and then eat. Mm -hmm. um, so most of my childhood cooking, you know, uh, random pieces of undercooked chicken, um, overcooked uh, cornbread, badly baked coffee cakes, salads, stuff like that. Watching my mother cook, being a spectator, really more a spectator than anything in her kitchen. Watching my father cook, um, all that was really important um, sort of later on. Mm. Um, and then I started cooking and I realized, oh wait a minute, there's this whole other thing where you cook and you don't think so much about you consuming it once you've made it, right. but you cook it and then you give it. Mm. Um, and you hope that other people eat it. Mm. Uh, and that becomes sort of a different thing. What are the types of things that your parents cooked in your home? What did you grow up eating? Oh my God, I mean, you know, I'm Italian-American, both my parents are Italian, but you know, there were those truly Italian things that mm. my father would make. My father made a lot of really Italian things, and my mother somewhat. But my mom was much more interested in French cooking. Mm. So we ate, a, you know, we ate our way through Julia Child books, mm. uh, James Beard, uh, Diane Lucas. So when did you start to think of cooking as a potential profession? What kind of made you make that switch? You know, I just, I woke up on, uh, on graduating from college, I mean, literally that day, and just said, I guess I should pick something that I like right. to do. And, you know, it was sort of an unusual choice of profession, even, mm -hmm. even in the 90s. It right. was just sort of, you know, what right. are you going to do? I majored in art history. I didn't do anything that would indicate I was going right. to follow the path of cooking. And so, where did you get your start? Um, I don't know if you'd call it a start. <laughs> I, th I think if you ask the chef now what he thinks about my start, he might have a different take. Um, but I started in Larry Ford Jones' kitchen mm -hmm. in an American place um, on 32nd Street. I would proceed to work for anywhere from, like, say, 10 to 14 hours mm -hmm. and probably burned or screwed up about half of everything I did. I right. uh, burned myself a lot, learned a lot. You know, right. first day, sliced a jalapeno and then, you know, wet to my brow because <laughs> I was sweaty and, you know. It's a good lesson on your first day. All sorts of classic, just yeah. classic, like, you know, you open the cliche book and there's my picture, you know. <laughs> but then you left New York City as well. How did your travels and cooking abroad influence you? I would say um, that what ended up happening was I went to France and I cooked there for a number of years. Um, and I think that what I made in my childhood that I sort of filed away as mm. whatever, uh, sort of came to the forefront and emerged. So if you will, those experiences cooking in that, in a Guy Savoie in Paris in particular, mm sort of reawakened um, what happened when I was a kid. I sort of had all these flashback memories of my mother doing this or that or the other, or eating something, mm -hmm. sort of like uh, an inert, uh, you know, like a, like a powdered drink mix that yeah. sits in your drawer. And all of a sudden, France adds all this water, yeah. and you've got a, a pitcher full of ideas. Who would you say today are your biggest chef influences, beyond you know your family and those original home influences, but what really made you feel like, I might be good at this, this might be the real profession for me? To look at it as sort of a mountain you're always climbing is kind of cool. I mean, that's mm. just for me. Yeah. Um, but to that end, I would say uh, Guy Savoie in Paris, mm -hmm. huge inspiration to me. I mean, he really believed in me and he, he tolerated sort of, you know, that I was clumsy and that I was trying to find my way and that I didn't speak perfect French and I hadn't been tourneying potatoes since I was 14. I have to say Daniel Ballou, you know, because mm. years later I came back from France and you know, I had 10 years of cooking under my belt, mm. and French cooking, right. and thought, I don't have anything more to learn. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm good. And boy, was I wrong. I've had sort of a later, a later career mm. mentor in Bobby Flay, mm. who is so unabashedly American. We're going to be cooking a real throwback today. Oh, yeah. From your mother and with your mother. Oh, what boy. are we making? No, boy, you're in for a treat, <laughs> my friend. Uh, yeah. We're not going to be for want of personality. <laughs> I don't know about salt, but I know personality, we're good. We're gonna make just my mom's marinara sauce, which is very carrot heavy. Mm. Um, it's got a carroty kind of energy to it. It takes 10, 15 minutes from start to finish. I wish I had this, you know, grandmother's seven hour sauce over the stove, stir and wait kind of thing, but we're not waiters no. in our family. We don't like to wait. Perfect, well, will you show us the steps? Absolutely, let's get to it. I have a pain in my side already. Just spending two minutes with my mother's. <laughs> Today we're going to be making my mom's marinara sauce, my mom's way. It's my mom's way or the highway, so I guess it's her recipe, right mom? This is my quickie, I mean everybody has a marinara sauce, but this is mine. 
So to, to get started, I have one clove of garlic and one medium onion just cut into a dice. And I've got some olive oil back there. Mom, you want to drop it in? Yeah. It's a marinara that depends on what you have in the pantry. But you can't leave out the onion and you can't leave out the carrot. How's that working? How about some salt, Mom? Salt. One carrot, one onion. Should we tell them this is the flavor base? Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is the flavor base. A little hot pepper. I, I can have never any. have enough hot. Okay, you want some oregano? Yeah. The oregano started with pizza, but now we're throwing it into the marinara. Oh God, this is gonna be a good one. Why? Because it smells good. We had good ingredients. How can you tell mom at this point? Smell, use your sniffer as they say. Okay, now we could put in the tomatoes. Yeah. The carrots are still crunchy, but not hard crunchy. And the onions are translucent. But fresh tomatoes don't cook up the same way the canned ones do. Also, you can jar up tomatoes. Now, Mom, at what point do you salt the water for pasta? Well, Lynn Casper on the Splendid Table says, put it in when you remember. That doesn't sound like a plan. It doesn't, but if you wait until the end, you may have forgotten it. The carrots are still a little bit crunchy, but we're ready to blend, and I'm going to drop the bucatini. Right, Mom? So we drained the pasta, and now we've added it into the sauce, and I'm going to add a little bit of that reserved pasta water, because I we undercooked the pasta a little bit, just so that we could have a couple of minutes to cook it in the sauce. I'm going to add the cheese now. OK. A little parm. You don't want to overdo it. What do you think, Mom? Fabulous. Cool. Can I put a little more cheese on? Yeah. OK. This is my mom's marinara sauce. Thanks for watching.